All right, here's our second written problem, although it's kind of the first one where you've done any work. Uh, what we're asked to do here is a L'Hopital's rule question. And as I talked about up here, it's pretty hard L'Hopital's rule question. It's not really something that would be appropriate for a test or a midterm. So if you struggled on this, don't worry about it a whole lot. Um, but if you're able to figure it out, you should be really proud of yourself. Uh, so what you want to do in a problem like this is recognize that it's an indeterminate form. What type of indeterminate form? Well, if you let all your x's tend towards infinity, this term is going to go off towards infinity. Informally, infinity cubed is infinity, and the square root of infinity is infinity. And then you add 1 to infinity, and you still have infinity. So this base down here tends towards infinity when x goes towards infinity. And then if you look at the exponent here, the natural log of infinity is also infinity. So the denominator here goes off towards infinity, but 1 divided by something that's infinitely large gets infinitely small. So this is the infinity to the 0 type. You don't need to write that. Um, but that's kind of telling you you have this indeterminate form. You can't just look at it and tell what the answer is. That's probably not a big surprise since I say it's ridiculously hard here. Um, so we're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule. But the problem with using L'Hopital's rule is you need it to be in kind of a fractional form to use L'Hopital's rule. And it's not in a fractional form right now. It's in the form of an exponent. And what we learned is there's a little trick you can do when you have something in the form of an exponent. And specifically, it's called a log transformation. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the natural log, any log will do, but natural log usually is the easiest, of both sides of the equation. And you're like, what do you mean both sides of the equation? I don't have both sides of the equation, you just gave me an expression. Right, so what you typically want to do on these problems is give that expression a name, maybe y equals. So now you have an equation, so now you can do stuff to both sides of the equation, namely that log transformation that I described. A couple comments on this line. Really, when you take the natural log of both sides, it should be the natural log of the limit as opposed to the limit of the natural log. But our limit rules that you might have learned in a Calc 1 class allow you to interchange the limit and the log here. So you can put it right here and then kind of worry about the limit part later on. And the advantage of having it right here is now you can apply one of your log rules. Um, but actually, before I apply a log rule, I should describe one more thing that I did that's different from this line to this line. And it's me changing radical notation here into exponent notation. The square root of x cubed is just x to the 3 halves power. But the advantage of writing it is x to the 3 halves power is I kind of know that I'm going to end up using L'Hopital's rule because I got this in a determinant form. And so since I'm going to end up using L'Hopital's rule, I want things to be easy to deal with when I take derivatives. And it's easier to take derivatives when you have stuff written in exponent form. So that's why I wrote it this way. Now to the part about why I added these natural logs in the first place. Well, I didn't want this exponent here. The problem with having an exponent here is it is not conducive to L'Hopital's rule, which needs things written as a fraction. But there's a log rule that says whenever you're taking the log of something raised up to an exponent, you can move that exponent down in front of the log. So by introducing this log, I'm able to get rid of this exponent and end up with this line. Lots of logs floating around here. Make sure you can follow where all the different pieces go, where everything went. Um, but you can go from this line to this line here. And the advantage with this line here is it's kind of already a fraction. It's not written as a fraction. It's written as a fraction times something else. Um, but when you have a fraction times a number, if you want, you can just put that number up on top. So while these are algebraically equivalent, this form is kind of preferable because this form right here is more conducive to L'Hopital's rule. Now you can double check that you still have an indeterminate form. You do. If this is indeterminate, this will end up being indeterminate. It's an indeterminate form of the infinity over infinity type because as x is 10 towards infinity, the natural log of x goes towards infinity, as does the natural log of x to the 3 halves plus 1, because infinity to the 3 halves is infinity, plus 1 is still infinity, natural log of infinity is infinity, informally speaking. Um, so I apply L'Hopital's rule here by taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. And this is a little bit challenging. This is going to test your Calc 1 knowledge more than your Calc 2 knowledge. The derivative of the bottom is fairly straightforward. The derivative of natural log of x is just 1 over x. But the derivative of the top here is pretty hard. You're going to have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of natural log of something is 1 divided by that something. So in this case, 1 over x to the 3 halves power plus 1. But then I'm not done. I still have to multiply by, this is chain rule, the derivative of this inside part. The derivative of this is a function. So the derivative of x to the 3 halves plus 1, well, I'd have to use the power rule to figure out the derivative of x to the 3 halves. So I'd kind of bring the 3 halves down in front. And then I would have x to the whatever exponent I get when I take 3 half and subtract 1. Well, 3 halves minus 1 is just 1 half. And then to that, I have to add the derivative of 1, but fortunately the derivative of any constant is just 0. So I have a plus 0 here, which I don't even need to write. Uh, so that leaves me with this form. And this form is kind of hard to look at, but maybe I can clean it up a little bit. 
I'm going to do in two steps what could probably be done in one step. Uh, I'm going to take this three. I'm going to take this x to the one half and put it up on the top of this fraction. So think three x to the one half power. And then I'm going to multiply these two fractions by multiplying straight across three x to the one half times one is this three x to the one half. And then the two times x to the three halves plus one. That two needs to get distributed each of these terms. So I have two x to the three halves plus two. And then I left the denominator alone to get this one over x. And the advantage to this form as opposed to this form is I got a fraction divided by a fraction. And I can change division of fractions into multiplication of fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator, taking this one over x and flipping it upside down and moving it up top. So when I look at this, I kind of think about this is gone and there's an x divided by one here. Well, that x divided by one has to get multiplied by three x to the one half divided by this stuff. So three x to the one half times x, uh, I have to add the exponents. 3x to the 1 half times x to the 1 power is 3x to the 3 halves power. So through some pretty tedious algebraic manipulation, I get down to this form here. And the advantage to this form is now it's kind of this fractional looking thing again. So I can look at it and see, can I evaluate this limit? Or do I have to use L'Hopital's rule again? I think you have to use L'Hopital's rule again. Because when x tor tends towards infinity, x to the 3 halves goes to infinity. So 3 times that also infinity. And similar logic down here, the bottom goes to infinity. So I again have an indeterminate form. It's worth pointing out that if you're really clever on here, you might be able to recognize this limit. You might be like, well, the two's not gonna affect my limit at all. And these x to the three halves will kind of eventually cancel each other out, loosely speaking. So this limit's gonna end up being three halves. And that's true, but I don't think that that's a conclusion you can quite come to at this point in our class. So I'm just gonna continue working. I wanna apply L'Hopital's rule. And it's worth pointing out that sometimes when you apply L'Hopital's rule, it's hard for the reader to follow your work. By the way, why is this limit the same as this limit? Where, what's going on here? Um, so typically what people do is they write a little H above the equal sign when you apply L'Hopital's rule. So to help the reader understand how I got from this line to this line, maybe I should have put a little H right here. That's optional, it's not wrong if you don't write it, but that's just a standard that some people follow. So now that I'm using L'Hopital's rule again, I'm gonna put another little H right here and then take the derivative to the top and the bottom again. So to take the derivative to the top, I need to use the power rule. I'll bring this exponent down in front. Three times three halves would be nine halves. X to the three halves minus one would be one half power. And then down on the bottom here, I got two terms. So I have to take the derivative of each term individually. The derivative of this term, that just goes away. The derivative of constant is just zero. And then the derivative of two X to the three halves power, I'd bring the three halves down in front. And so three halves times two is six halves. And I would now have x to the one half power and plus zero if you want. And this is a limit I can evaluate unlike this one because now I can cancel out these x to the one half powers. And you're like, well, why didn't you just cancel out the x to the three half power here because of this extra term? Right? Algebraically speaking, you can't cancel out an x from this term and this term. You can cancel over multiplication, but not over addition. You can't cancel these x to the three half power, even though it would have given you the same answer. But you can cancel out these x to the one half power so I can evaluate this limit. I can just say that this is, well, if these go away, it's the, it's nine halves over six halves, which if you do our same trick where you uh, flip the bottom upside down, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, you would get 18 over 12, which reduces to just three halves. So the answer to this question is not three halves. Ooh, I almost messed up there. Um, I purposely have been writing natural log of y on the left hand side of this entire thing so that I don't forget at the very end that that's not my answer. All right, remember, y is what my answer is. I put in these natural logs because I wanted to do this log transformation early on. And so what I have to do is be like, well, I just solved for the natural log of y, but what I want to do is solve for y. To solve for y, I have to do e to both sides of this equation. So I get y equals e to the 3 halves power. Or if you wanted to write this in radical notation, the square root of e cubed. This way is totally fine. I just changed it into radical notation because that's how the answer is provided to me up here. So that's the idea with this written problem.